Across the entire Halo series, from Combat Evolved all the way through to Infinite, I'm not sure there's ever been a single opening level I'd consider one of my favourites. That being said, Cairo Station in Halo 2 is a mission I've recently come to enjoy replaying a lot more, having previously been quite disappointed by it, and so I thought I'd jot down a few thoughts to help me reconcile my conflicting emotions. Before we get cracking, as per usual, let's first remind ourselves of what happened previously during Halo 2. I'm just winding you up of course, I know this is the beginning of the game, let's jump straight in. Right, first off, I want to quickly talk about this cutscene that was added to the very start Part of the Anniversary Edition before later being removed. I know it's not included at the start of Halo 2's campaign anymore, but nonetheless, it's terrible. The recontextualising of the events which follow as the Arbiter recounting what happened in 2 to Locke fell completely flat, and to new players, this edition designed to promote Halo 5 would have made no sense whatsoever. Let's not do anything like it again. He was indeed my enemy, but in time, I named him Ally. Even friend. The events which forged this bond were complicated. Thankfully, the true start of Halo 2 is marvellous. I'm one of those people who did at times struggle with its campaign from a gameplay perspective, as to me, it feels like a far narrower experience than its predecessor. In terms of narrative, however, it's the complete opposite, with 2's story and the way it's presented being a much more expansive affair than Combat Evolved's could ever hope to be. It was a bold decision by developer Bungie to begin with the introduction of the Arbiter, but it makes sense for two reasons. Firstly, there was a chance him being a playable character for half the game was going to ruffle some feathers, and so getting you used to him as early as possible, pushing you to empathise with the character, helps make his emergence as the campaign's co-star a little less jarring. Second, it also opened up an engaging way for Bungie to recount the events of the first game, without resorting to a previously on Halo video or similar. Contextually, it makes complete sense for the Prophets to be recounting the events of the original game. It's a scene which is absolutely designed first and foremost to get you up to speed, but I must say, it's disguised pretty well. Noble Hierarchs, surely you understand that once the Parasite attacked... There will be order in this council! You were right to focus your attention on the Flood, but this demon, this Master Chief... By the time I learned the demon's intent, there was nothing I could do. We then swing over to Cairo Station to catch up with Master Chief. You go through the suit diagnostics check, a process you'll be somewhat familiar with if you've played Combat Evolved, followed by a Half-Life-esque tram ride with Johnson. The cinematics which follow are again excellent. Scenes of the Arbiter at his lowest moment. Drawn quite a crowd. If they came to hear me beg, they will be disappointed. Are you sure? are juxtaposed against those featuring Chief at one of his best. You told me there wouldn't be any cameras. And you told me you were gonna wear something nice. Folks need heroes, Chief, to give them hope. So smile, would you? Well, we still got something to smile about. And I love the parallels between the two. The Arbiter receives his punishment in front of a crowd of Covenant baying for blood, while Chief takes centre stage in front of a gaggle of adoring Marines. The only improvement I'd suggest is that it would have been nice for Chief to receive a medal himself, one that was somehow stuck to the chest area of his armour. That way, you'd have the Arbiter being branded in the same area Chief displays an accolade, which would have helped create an even harsher contrast between the pair. After being interrupted by the arrival of the Covenant, you then take control of Master Chief. Straight away, you're presented with multiple opportunities to pick up two of the game's new weapons, the SMG and the Battle Rifle, before you arrive at a door and are forced to play the waiting game, a situation somewhat reminiscent of a certain scene in Star Wars. And then, finally, after ten or so minutes of build-up, it's finally time to get shooting, and what's included I've always been in two minds about. I remember vividly playing this mission back in 2004, 
4 and being rather disappointed with it. Fresh from watching the spectacular E3 2003 gameplay trailer set on the streets of New Mombasa, I was ready for heated urban combat across a mixture of narrow and open environments on Earth. What I actually got was a retread of Combat Evolve's Pillar of Autumn. At the time, I really had to push myself to get excited about it. It wasn't at all what I'd envisioned the first level of Halo 2 to be like prior to the game's release. They say, however, that time is the greatest healer, and now, many years later, I do have much more of an appreciation for what Cairo Station does. It is very similar to the Pillar of Autumn, I don't think that can be denied, but in cinematic terms especially, it is without doubt a massive improvement. What always struck me about the Pillar of Autumn is that it doesn't seem to be anywhere near as expansive as later mission The More would suggest it is. Most of the corridors are narrow, you rarely get to take a look out of any windows, although you do once or twice and it often feels like you could simply be in a building as much as you could be in a gigantic spaceship. Cairo Station, on the other hand, gets this side of things spot on. There are huge windows all over the place and plenty of explosive moments, which both push you to look outside and really breathe in the scale of it all. First, Sister Station, the Malta, goes kaboom. Hey, check it out. The Malta's already driven off its borders. Malta, what is your status? Over. I don't believe it! They're retreating! We won! which is swiftly followed by everything going tits up on the Athens as well. Uh-oh. Hey, they're leaving the Athens. Cortana, assessment. That explosion came from inside the Athens. Same as the Malta. The Covenant must have brought something with them. A bomb. Then they sure as hell brought one here. Chief, find it. Covenant boarding craft also dock into huge hangars, rather than the teeny tiny corridors used during the Pillar of Autumn, and the parts during which you defend these areas from your alien adversaries are for me as exciting, if not more so, than any encounter featured in Combat Evolve's opening attempt. In general, even though both are quite linear, Cairo Station certainly feels more open during its moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, with the Pillar of Autumn by comparison feeling quite closed off. The final third of the mission is its best. I mentioned earlier that Bungie throws in new weapons in the forms of the SMG and Battle Rifle, early doors to add excitement, and by this point you've also had the chance to use multiple human turrets, another new addition to Halo 2. But it's during Cairo Station's final third where Bungie really ups the ante. During this section, you do still work your way through some traditional encounters, but mixed in with them are several surprises. There are two trips across the outside of the station, where you discover Covenant using Using jetpacks for the first time in environments completely devoid of sound. Well, nearly devoid of sound, I'm not sure you should still be able to hear your gun firing. There's also the arrival of a brand new enemy in the form of the drones, one now a series staple even if they are a real pain in the ass to fight. And finally, there's a slow moving platform, because it's Halo 2 of course there's a slow moving platform I'm sure Bungie couldn't resist. To cap everything off, there's one last Covenant squad to take down when you reach the bomb, and I would have liked this encounter to have been a bit more interesting. That bomb can destroy an entire orbital defence platform, it's a massive bomb, and yet it doesn't really seem to be that well guarded. You can run in, blast your enemies to pieces, and reach the end of the mission quicker than you can say someone set us up the bomb, and it is somewhat anticlimactic. What is in no way anticlimactic are the scenes which follow. Fortunately, Chief and Cortana manage to defuse the bomb just in the nick of time. How much time was left? You don't want to know. And what follows is amazing. One of my favourite tracks, The Last Spartan, kicks into gear, and, well, I'm just going to let it play out. And as the Covenant Carrier explodes above Earth, Cairo Station draws to a close. 
I feel like I say this a lot when it comes to Halo 2 in particular, but Cairo Station is a mission which has grown on me over time. 2004 Ben was definitely hoping for something that took the series in a new direction right from the game's outset, especially considering the quality of 2's pre-release footage, whereas Ben in the present has come to appreciate it for the solid opening level it is, and for some reason he's also begun talking about himself in the third person as well. If I were asked to rank it amongst the best and worst levels the Halo series has to offer, it would sit somewhere slap bang in the middle. It's an improvement over the Pillar of Autumn before it, and a decent quality start to Halo 2's campaign, but I think it's also fair to say that it doesn't exactly set the world alight either. Nonetheless, I've never played a shooter which has managed to nail every single mission featured in its campaign, and when your opening is as solid as Cairo Station's is, I'd say you have a pretty sturdy foundation on which to build the rest of your game. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a good time, do consider liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts in the comments, and fingers crossed, I'll catch you all again soon.